Hello and welcome to the Creaky Cutest. Today we're doing a review for Defend the Rook. Now this has been published by Clabata and developed by 1UP+. Plus, and it's currently available on the Xbox, the PlayStation, the Switch and the PC. And we'll set you back around £16 depending on which platform you are buying it on. Okay, so Defend the Rook, what is this game? Well, it's kind of like a um, a roguelike tactics board game. You are the Rook, and you have a couple of heroes. You also have some spells and some traps and some towers um, to defend your Rook. The idea and the premise of the game is you set out against waves, five waves of enemies. You make it to the fifth wave and you get to fight the boss. Beat the boss and you've passed the round. Now there's a number of different rounds and a number of different bosses, but no matter where you go, you're going to be fighting five waves. Your big challenge is to get both your rook and your heroes to the end of that fifth round alive. And as you go through the different waves, you then get to level up and pick a different perk or a different ability for your um, heroes. Now, there's a number of different heroes that you can actually unlock in this game. You only ever have three at once, um, but you and you can also unlock different types of heroes the more you complete the game. Most of them are bound to complete in the game. However, there are one or two that you can actually unlock as you're progressing through the first playthrough of this game. This game is designed to be kind of run through multiple times. In fact, you're probably going to die a lot in this game when you're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. In other words, what upgrades you should be picking for your troops as you go through in order to get them to the next round. Now, it's not just your heroes that you get to upgrade. You also get to upgrade your defense towers and your traps as well. Now, I quite like that. I quite like the amount of kind of progression that there is in this game, because not only do you um, level up, unlock different troops um, and power them up as you're playing, you can also power up your turrets as well or your defense towers. However, if you do die at the end of that round, at the end of that death, you actually get extra points and extra kind of abilities that you can then use or spend to level up your general play. Now, there are five different boards to kind of master or complete. And for every board that you actually successfully make it to the end of the fifth round, you will get one diamond. And that diamond you can then use to spend on upgrading your heroes, your contraptions or your spells. Of course, the more boards you get through, the more diamonds you'll mm -hmm. actually get. And the more times you play through um, the game, the more upgrades you're going to get as well. Now, before you actually go into the game itself, you're kind of um, in your kind of boardroom, your home, your hub, your base, whatever you want to call it. You can see the actual board to start, but you can also pick which spells that you want to take in with you. You can also pick the different troops that you want to take in with you as well. What I really like about the spell loadout is that it's not always the same. In other words, the different spell loadouts that you're going to be able Able to pick to take into the game changes every run that you go through. Now there absolutely is a ton of content here for such a small kind of turn-based tactic strategy type of game. Um, I was expecting something a little bit less than what I actually got so I was pleasantly surprised with just the sheer amount of content that this game has to offer. When you complete the different rounds that's when you kind of like get your um, how do we say your experience points that then you can spend in order to level up your troops and again like I said not only can you level up your troops but you can level up um, your rook as in the main character you are 
if the rook reaches zero life points, well, your round is over. So defending that rook is the whole premise and point of the game. Now, I'm not here to tell you that this game is absolutely perfect, merely that I personally enjoyed it. I really do wish that the text that this game has, because there is a decent story involved in this game, um, but it's not voice acted. And for me, that always takes away from the game, because instead of, you know, concentrating on that, I'm, you know, reading the text. And I think that can be the same for others as well. So I really wish that all of the text in this game um, was actually voice acted. And sadly, it isn't. Also, I really felt like I needed to be able to maneuver around the board unfortunately when you are playing you're kind of stuck on this one view and there's certainly times that I wanted to kind of just move the camera angle so I can get you know a different perspective on the board I play chess I love chess I love turn-based tactic games in general and sometimes I feel like a different perspective can really help you know you when you're trying to figure out what it is that you're going to be doing next on the plus side however this game worked perfectly as intended i can tell you right now that i had no issues with this game it worked absolutely amazingly on my xbox series s no dashboards no glitches or anything like that so i'm really glad that this game was you know a success and worked as intended Honestly, I enjoyed this game. It has a lot of personality and it's a game that I can see myself continuing to play as time goes on. I think one of the strongest reasons why I could continue to play it is that this game has a certain sense of randomness to it. You know, like this, for instance, is the second game board, as in the second board that you are supposed to be on after completing the first five waves of the game. However, um, this is like the fourth or fifth time I believe I've gone through this run. And right here, that was a completely different game board to the first time that I actually played it. So I like how there is a certain sense of randomness. Like I said, the spells as well, they kind of get switched in and out too. So, you know, the game likes to keep you on your toes. Anyway, I'm going to give this game a solid 7 out of 10. Like I said, this game absolutely surprised me. I enjoyed it a lot. I think it has incredible depth and it's absolutely value for money. Many, many hours could be spent inside this game. And for only £16, I think it's an absolute steal. But if you stuck around to the very end of this review, a big thank you to you. Don't forget to comment Red Banana down below. Just confuse all those people new to the channel or that didn't watch to the very end. Also, don't forget I've actually released a sci-fi dystopian novel. It's available on paperback and ebook and completely free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And it's called Seven Broken and Bound and you can find it down in the description. But until next time, I've been a monk, we've been a Christy Kudus, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.